So winner is going to be in today two. Loser is out. A mulligan to six here for Seth Kelly. He's looking at a six card hand, uh, especially with these ramp style decks. They need to keep just about any six that is within reason. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get to seven lands a couple turns early. You need all your cards to get there. Right. Yeah, mulliganing with these Valakut decks, has, or just really any ramp deck, yeah. tends to punish you. The blue scape shift decks, the old control ones, we don't see them much anymore. Those ones could actually tolerate a couple mulligans. Um, you know, cards like Cryptic Command, Electrolyze would, would start to stock your hand back up. Right. You were technically playing magic outside of just trying to ramp up your lands. Well, unfortunately for Seth, his six wasn't one of the keepable sixes. So he's going to go down to five. And that's going to be a quick keep for the Scapeshift player. Lands and spells. That'll do it. Yeah, well, the, I mean... That, but the, the nice part about Scapeshift is while it doesn't mulligan well, is that you can keep almost any set. Uh, lands and spells are all good because all your spells and land, like your spells are more lands. It's, it's unlikely that the, any hand of four lands and three spells is probably keepable regardless of what they are. Right, yeah, producing mana is just generally good. Uh, the one spell in the deck that really makes that less true is the Lightning Bolt. And I suppose being heavy and Scapeshift in your opener is pretty poor as well. Yeah, so turn one, Forest into Search for Tomorrow. Remember, because Kelly is playing Scapeshift as opposed to something like Primeval Titan, he doesn't really have to worry about his mountain count. He just has to get to seven lands. Right. Yeah, three basic forests in this build of the deck. Uh, the second base of forest is, you often say, the worst card in the strictly Titan versions. Yeah, those decks uh, are more frequently trying to go off with a not a full combo. It's just like you ramp, you play some Valakuts, you start doming them with mountains. Seth, because he has that one card finish, he's slower, but he's there's a lot less moving parts. Mm -hmm. Serum Visions for Dressler. Scribe two cards to the bottom. One of them looked to be a second Sahili Rai. Sure. And that's the neat part. If you, I mean, this was true in the past of Twin, and it's true of his deck too. The combo pieces, the Felidar Guardian Sahili Rai, are the worst cards in his deck. Mm -hmm. Far seek turn two from Kelly. So he'll be up to a five drop as soon as turn three. Spreading seas picked up for Dressler. And yeah, I suppose because Kelly's playing scape shift and not through the breach, spreading seas is less good here. Mm -hmm. All Kelly cares about is getting to seven lands. Doesn't really care what those lands are. And outside of being able to execute the combo, Dressler's spells don't line up particularly well here. No. Um, Remand is historically the best counter spell to supplement a combo. When we saw Splinter Twin in the format, it was generally a four Remand deck. You just bought time, comboed off. The thing about playing against a Valakut deck is just being able to cast a spell next turn. If Dressler can't combo off, he's still in a lot of trouble. And his combo is always yeah. vulnerable to Lightning Bolt. So Kelly just trying to do a shortcut here as he gets his Stomping Ground Spreading Seized. A lot of times players will move a land off to the side or something like that just so they can correctly count their lands. Uh, but Spreading Seize was the play for Dressler. Yeah, because his interaction is weak, I would think that Dressler has to rely on the combo a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if his goal is to play defense against Scape Shift, he's going to be on the losing side of that. Uh, fortunately, he can just jam a turn four combo, and it, and it very likely works. Right. A lot of his supporting cast is just pretty bad in this matchup. Lightning Helix, Lightning Bolt, Path to Exile. He has a Supreme Verdict, Jace Architect of Thought, and here the Harbender. None of these are good. It's yeah. It's just a list of just not particularly land, powerful spells. Land five for Kelly. And this is where the mulligan is coming to hurt Kelly. You see his hand has one card remaining in it, or make that two cards. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of thing where if he had a seven card hand, he just would far seek here and next turn do something like landscape shift win. Right. Um, he, he just doesn't have enough fuel to make that play. Sahili Rai, the play for Dressler. There is the possibility here, landscape shift are Seth's cards. If he draws a rampant growth, he wins. He goes land, rampant growth, scape shift, 18 you. He drew a lightning bolt, which should at least protect him from a combo on this following turn. Yeah, and that's not bad because he has the scape shift. He just needs one more land. Mm -hmm. So 
that's probably a welcome pickup. Like, rampant growth would have been better because it means he would have won. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, take it or leave it, I think he'd take it. Just going to pass the turn, does Seth Kelly. Back over to Dressler, draws another spreading seas. I believe he has the Felidar Guardian. I don't know. I mean, is he going to jam the combo? Interesting. And Kelly was doing some posturing with his lands. I'm not sure what he was attempting to represent. Uh, it's entirely possible that it was a double bluff where he was trying to pretend like he was trying to pretend that he had something. Sure. <laughs> where he actually does have the Lightning Bolt, which prevents the combo. Sahili's going to scry to the bottom. And Max is just going to go straight for the combo. Bad news for Max. Seth drew a copy of Lightning Bolt. So say Felidar Guardian targets Sahili Rai. And then Sahili Rai minus two to target Felidar Guardian. In response, Seth bolting away the Planeswalker. So now a land off the top is going to win the game for Seth. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of pseudo lands do as well. You know, a rampant growth. Okay, it looks like, so what Max then did is he used his copy to blink spreading seas with Sahili Rai being gone. So Seth bolted a little early there, but it's not going to cost him. He draws the land and with that should be the game. And what a multi five for Seth Kelly. Seven lands. And Max is tapped out, so cast Escape Shift. Sacrifices all seven lands, gets a Valakut and six mountains. That will deal 18. Mm. Max is going to make him show it. Right. This build plays seven basic mountains, three cinder glades, and three stomping grounds. So he has more than enough left over here. Yep. It's good on Max, by the way, against these decks when they go for a full Escape Shift to make sure they have enough mountains left. So Max is going to make him show it. I, Seth does have it, though. There's some great stories about tutorable win conditions and players trying to get by not having them in their deck. Valakut, six mountains, deal you 18. There's also the potential that your scapeshift opponent, for some reason, grabs three Valakuts and tries to tell you that you're dead. Or I suppose in this case it would be four Valakuts. Or maybe they, they put a forest down. I don't know. <laughs> Game one goes over to Seth Kelly on scapeshift. Winning on a mull to five. It's impressive stuff. So maybe speaking too soon, saying that this is a tougher matchup for Scapeshift. Certainly the combo, I mean, Max had a turn four kill, and there's only four Lightning Bolts in Seth's deck. It's his only way to interact with it. But when he has one, it wasn't too hard for him. And you, you could make the argument that Kelly had to peel a Lightning Bolt, but if he just peeled a ramp spell on that turn, he would have won the game just the same. So we go to sideboards, Dressler is packing three Relic of Progenitus, three Dispel, two Negate, two Engineered Explosives, a Stony Silence, a Kitchen Fink, a Lightning Helix, a Wear Tear, and a Gideon Jura. The Negates are great. Uh, dispel against this particular build, I suppose it insulates him against the Lightning Bolt on his combo. That's the only way that Seth has to answer the combo in the 75. Yep. So the danger is that Seth has also Sudden Shocks, which you, you can't dispel, but that, still that's, work. That's a bummer. We go over to Kelly's side. There are three obstinate Baloth, two Relic of Progenitus, two Engineered Explosives, two Nature's Claim, two Sudden Shock, an Anger of the Gods, a Reclamation Sage, an Ancient Grudge, and a Thrun the Last Troll. Uh, the Sudden Shocks make a lot of sense, more ways to break up the combo. Maybe you bring in Thrun because your opponent's a blue deck. Yeah, Thrun's probably fine, be not because Thrun's particularly good here. Uh, it's because you have some other cards that are just worse. Yep. They're going to get ready for game number two. Now, in just a couple of weeks here, we have... The next Grand Prix offering for Star City Games, that one's going to be Kaladesh Ether Revolt Limited, and it's in Orlando. On March 24th through the 26th, make plans to be part of Magic the Gathering history when StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Orlando. Play in the Kaladesh Ether Revolt Limited format main event to compete for thousands of dollars in prizes and a spot on the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour. Select the three-day Infinite Challenge package to compete in all challenge events for one low price, while also walking away with the exclusive Scrapper Champion playmat. All Friday challenges are also Grand Prix Trials. Come out early and compete for buys in the main event and more chances to claim a Scrapper Champion playmat. 
prefer 100 card formats? Register for the Ultimate Commander Package to play in four Commander On Demand events and take home a Commander vs. Playmat and Ultimate Guard Boulder Deck Case. And don't forget to come say hello to Grand Prix Orlando's many special guests, including cosplayer Vanessa Martin and an artist alley full of fan favorites, headlined by guest of honor Vulcan Baga. Be part of Magic the Gathering history. Register for Grand Prix Orlando today. So that's now just two short weeks away. It's Grand Prix Orlando. So going to the cyborg game, we're going to have Max Dressler on the play again. So Kelly did set up for a turn five win there. On a five card hand. Yeah. I mean, all his, his cards were just a scape shift, seven lands, and a lightning bolt. That was, a, some of the lands were ramp spells, but that's, basically the same thing. So the real problem that Dressler is going to run into in this matchup is his main deck has all these cards that aren't very good, and his sideboard is largely more of the same. He doesn't have much in the way of upgrades. Some of the cards he has are particularly good. Yeah, I'm happy having the gate, but I wish I had more. And there are some issues to, to fit in this combo. He's definitely taken a board control route. You were mentioning with uh, cards like Lightning Bolt, Spreading Seas. Um, Mana Leaks, Cryptic Commands, these are missing, and he's really paying a price for them in this matchup. And a card that's particularly good against Scape Shift decks, Spell Snare, nowhere in the 75. Right, Spell Snare is excellent. It counters most of the ramp spells. Mm -hmm. Tap lands from both players, Colonnade and Cinderglade. Start off here on our second game. Keep in mind, last game, Max tried to trying to jam a turn four combo, did hit one of the lightning bolts. For Seth Kelly, his answers are four lightning bolts, two copies of Sudden Shock. Those are the only ways he can interact. Sudden Shock's going to be kind of tough for Dressler to beat. Kelly produces that. He's just really in trouble. Yeah. While Bowman's for Dressler. And you see where his lack of sideboarding is going to show. There's still Lightning Helix in his hand here in the post-board game. Just not really enough things to board in. Well, given Lightning Bolt and Sudden Shock, it's very difficult for Dressler to actually combo off. Part of his game plan, he does play four Snapcaster Mage. He might try for this Bolt Helix Snapcaster Mage plan, but it's really slow, especially if you're not countering any of the early ramp spells. Yeah, so that Farseek does resolve. And I mean, and I know from having played the Breach side, when I play against a deck like Jeskai Control, uh, I kind of feel that Farseek is my most important card in the matchup, mm -hmm. where if I, once I start getting ahead on lands, the matchup becomes pretty easy. Uh, right. The games I lose are the ones where they snare my first ramp spell and mana leak the second one, then I actually have trouble winning. Right. Um, Max can't do that. Yeah, I can, t I can tell you a lot about beating Valakut decks with blue decks, and the spells I used to do it are largely absent from Dressler's 75. Yeah, Spell Pierce, Spell Snare, Mana Leak. It's going to be an Explorer from Seth Kelly. That one resolves. So he'll make land number four. And looks like land number five with him. He'll go for another Explorer, yeah. That resolves too. So now how about not just land number five, how about land number five? And we'll see if he has land number six. Yeah, he can he can play one more. He does pass. I don't. Yeah, he had one more land drop. Eh, probably doesn't need it. <laughs> Lightning Helix on end step. I, I say that in a really flippant way, but I, he probably uh, it's pro honest actually. Right. It's fine. Serum visions from Max Dressler. Looks like a remand in the top two. That would have been a nice over wall of omens on the second turn. Yeah, just to slow things down. But damage is kind of done here. And there's still problems, right? Spreading seas is in Dressler's hand. That card doesn't do anything against the scape shift. So he's going to tap out here to seize one of Seth Kelly's lands. And he misses the fourth land drop despite cantripping. So he'll just say go. Uh, rampant growth. 
we'll see whether Seth can just win here. Land into Rampant Growth Scapeshift wins. Mm -hmm. has, I guess with his uh, Stomping Ground getting Spreading Seas, he doesn't have the green mana to do that kind of play. So I think why you might have seen Seth not committing an extra land is he picked up the mountain this turn and previously had Valakut. And he's trying to play an honest Valakut game that is weak yeah. to Spreading Seas. What well, about Primeval Titan? He's going to play that on six. Love well, that card. If he had that one, that's not terribly honest in the face of Spreading Seas. So he's going to ramp up to eight man. I believe he has the Scape Shift in hand as well. Oh, that's he gets he, and that's telling. He gets two fetch lands instead of two Valakuts, which is a huge tell on Scape Shift. Any old land will do. Don't want to get the mountains out of my deck. Don't want to expose my Valakuts. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't want the Valakuts to be crumbled, so it's a really smart play to get the fetch lands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if he didn't have Scape Shift, it still could be fine. If this Primal Titan attacks, then it gets two Valakuts. Then he goes and sacks the fetch lands and 12s his opponent. It's, you know, Rampant Groats out of his hand, makes it 18, something like that. It's fine. Right. Path to Exile on Primeval Titan. I am imagining Forest is the basic to be found. Sure. These Scape Shift lists, it doesn't even matter what you find. As long as you have enough mountains in your deck, everything's fine. Yeah. Dealing 22 from nine lands. I, I, I'm, I, I am yeah. confident that Kelly can figure this one out. And that was on upkeep. Uh, I mean, Max could have a negate up, and Seth will have to respect that. Sure. I was just cast another Primeval Titan. That'd be pretty good. Can't <laughs> negate that one. Here's another land and a scape shift. This is going to be the negate tech. check. Does Max have a negate? Remand, uh, well, bad news here is there, well, yep, yep, there's two fetch lands. And I believe two more basic forests in the deck as well, so this isn't even a concern for this is total not even a mountain, mountain count. count, yeah. Forest, forest. Opponent tapped out, check. Eight lands in play, check. He did force him to have the eighth land because Max is above 18. But uh, Seth has the 8th and ninth, and I believe 10th land, so that's uh, just fine. <laughs> yep. Sacrifices. Eh, enough lands. He has 10. As long as he sacrifices 8 and gets 2 Valakuts and 6 Mountains. Or he could actually get four Valakuts and four Mountains if he wanted here. He just has Mountains on the battlefield already. Yeah, so, so four Valakuts, four Mountains is the most damage I believe he can do. Maybe 16 Valakut triggers. 48. That's not a small amount of damage. Yeah, a lot of times you'll hear players talk about, oh, well, I'm going to gain life so they can't Valakut me. And it's like, well, that is possible, but... The number is somewhere in like the 200s, where you just, so you know you really need a lot of life gain for that to start being a real thing. Right, lightning we're, helix alone is not no, going to be enough. No, we're talking about like why? It's how many white martyr of sands did you sacrifice? <laughs> that kind of territory. How many times did you proclamation it back? Yeah. So that's going to be a handshake, and in two quick games, it is going to be Seth Kelly and his red-green scape shift moving on to day two. 